Well, hi, good morning. It's a privilege to welcome you all to Lakeside Online. We are delighted that you're able to be with us and we're really looking forward to spending this time together with you. Yeah, we've got a great service plan for this next hour that we've got together. We've got Dan and the team leading us in our sung worship. And then in a little while, we've got George also bringing us today's message. So you're going to see and hear a lot from this lady today. She's prepared a great message for us. And so make sure that you stick around for that. Yeah, if it's your first time with us, then we have also got some Lakeside pens to give away. So make sure you let us know either by introducing yourself in the online chat or maybe by popping over to our website and filling in one of the online forms we have on there. So we're believing it's going to be a great time together over this next hour. So be open to all that God might want to say to you today. But just before we move into that time of singing together, wherever you are, would you just take a moment with me to still your heart and let's just pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are omnipresent, Lord. You're everywhere and we might be in all our different homes, different settings right now, but we know that you're with each and every one of us. And our prayer right now is that wherever we are, that you would come and make yourself known to us, that you would fill us with an overwhelming knowledge of your love and your peace and that you're for us. And so, Lord, come and be with us now. And as we worship you, Lord, come and make yourself known to us. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Yeah, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence with us this morning. We thank you that you inhabit the praises of your people and we know that you're here with us now. We thank you that you've been with us and you're going to continue to be with us through our time together. And uh, Lord, I simply ask that you would help each of us open up our hearts and our minds more and more to hear and receive from you. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you, Dan, and the team for leading us there in that time of worship. You know, it's been great to see the different comments that you've been placing in the chat facility this morning, letting us know that you're watching with us. And we're going to give you another 60 seconds to say hi to one another or to quickly get up from your seat and make yourself another cuppa if that's needed as we get ready for our minute mingle. Now, if you don't know how this works, then in just a moment a countdown clock is going to appear on the screen and during that time either let us know you're watching if you haven't already done so or simply send a text message across to someone else to say hi to them to let them know that you're thinking of them and that you're missing seeing them here in person. And then I've got a few notices to share with you before we hand over to George who's going to be speaking to us. So are you ready for this? Let me count you in. Three, two, one. Go. Okay then, a few quick notices for you of some things taking place. First of all, thank you to those of you who've taken a batch of our Tri Church flyers and posted them around your neighbourhoods. I've still got a large number of these that are looking for a new home. So if you haven't yet taken some of them and don't mind a little foot slogging for maybe half an hour along your street, posting them into your neighbours' homes, then please do get in touch with me and I'll get them over to you. Now please don't be shy with this. Also, can I remember you to keep checking out our website to see what new life groups have been added? Admittedly, there aren't as many as normal right now, but we are expecting those to be on the increase as we continue to ask you to be creative in thinking about what you can be doing to get connected with others whilst we're still in this period of lockdown. And as with all things life group related, please get in touch with Pastor Matt who can chat these things through with you. Now, a quick heads up that next Sunday, the 9th of August, we're starting a brand new four-part series that we're calling A Summer in Philippi. If you haven't guessed by that name, we're going to be working our way through the Apostle Paul's letter to the church in Philippi, hence the name that we've given it. Really creative, huh? Now, this letter was written whilst Paul himself was in a period of personal lockdown and isolation and it contains some really important and relevant things for you and me today. So I want to encourage you to make sure that you get to listen to these each week. I know you're going to be blessed by them. 
And then one final thing, once again, thank you for your continued giving of your tithes and offerings. The different ways that you can continue to do this are on the screen for you if you haven't already got a note of these. But your faithfulness and your generosity in this area is so, so appreciated. Okay, that's all the notices I want to share with you this morning. Remember that we do send out more detailed ones in our weekly church news update. So if you don't already receive that, then make sure that you go onto Church Suite to register your details and your interest for that weekly email. And if you don't know how to do that, then just get in touch with me and I can help get that sorted for you. Okay, let me pray then as we get ready to hear God's word this morning to us. Heavenly Father, we thank you that your word is truth and your word is life, that your Bible is no ordinary book. We're going to hear about that this morning. And I pray that as Georgia shares it with us and as we receive it, that Father, you would just have your way with it this morning, God, that you would speak to our hearts and our minds, give us every bit of wisdom that we need in order to be able to apply what we hear to our lives so that we can know you better, we can know you more, and we can follow you wholeheartedly. Lord, come and speak to us now, we pray, for we ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, hi, good morning. Uh, this is a privilege, isn't it, to be sharing with you today. Um, I believe God placed a word on my heart and I'm really looking forward to sharing it with you all. I think you would all agree with me that when I say our words are really powerful, aren't they? Whoever made up the saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me, are wrong. Words are really cutting and powerful and can cause the deepest of wounds, but they can also uplift us, can't they, and encourage us and empower us to do really great things. I don't know about other parents watching today, but a lot of the time I open my mouth and my mum comes out. I find myself saying to our four kids all the things I'd hear my mum or dad saying to us when we were little. Things like, it's pardon, not what, and it'll all end in tears, or I want never gets, or there's no such thing as can't, or I'm not asking, I'm telling. I wonder how many of you have said something similar. Well, my mum also has four kids and she would often say things like, mark my words, or take my word for it, or you don't want to be doing that, or you should be doing this. As a teenager particularly, um, my parents would often say things to me that I thought were strict or that I really didn't agree with. And so I wouldn't listen or I would just do my own thing and then I'd wonder why I ended up in a mess or regretted my actions because of the consequences I ended up with. And actually now, looking back, I completely agree with everything they ever said to me and myself saying the same things to our two eldest. They might not always like it when I say to them, but I know I didn't when my mum said them to me, but actually she did know best. It's amazing, isn't it? If only I'd listened to my parents in the first place, then maybe I could have avoided a few problems and scrapes that I got myself into. I think it's the same with God. And if we only would listen to what he says to us through his word, instead of avoiding it and doing our own thing, then I think maybe we would save ourselves a lot of heartache. So I think it's safe to say that the words we hear have a massive impact on us and we want our kids to take our word for it, don't we, when it comes to their behaviour and growing up. And our Heavenly Father wants us to take his word for it too, not just when it comes to our faith, but, but life in general. He's given us a life manual, hasn't he? The Bible, which is full of instruction and promises and revelation and guidance that he wants us to read, learn, believe and be obedient to. He wants us to take his word for it, to trust that what he says in his word is actually true. In 2 Timothy 3 verse 16, it says that all scripture is God breathed. God wants us to read it, not just skim read it, but study it, digest it, let it dwell deep in our hearts and minds so we can recall it when needed every day. Psalm 119 verse 105 says, Your word is a lamp to my guided feet and a light for my path. That's such a great picture, isn't it? That when we might be unsure of which way to go, maybe he lights up the way. Imagine, maybe with me, just driving in the dead of night with no headlights and no street lights. Pretty scary, really. And I don't think it would be too long before we'd end up in a heap at the side of the road. We need the road in front of us to be illuminated. 
God's word does exactly that for you and for me in life. He lights up the path ahead and he helps us find our way. I love what the prophet Isaiah says about God's word in chapter 55, verse 11, that the word goes forth out of God's mouth and it will not return to him void, but that it will accomplish that which he pleases and it will prosper in where he sent it. God likens his word in this passage to the rain and the snow that waters the ground, causing the grain to grow up, producing seed for the farmer and bread for the hungry. It's the same with his word. He sends it out and it always produces fruit, always, accomplishing all God wants it to and his word will prosper everywhere he sends it. This is why I can say with the absolute utmost confidence today that I believe that the word of God, the Bible, scripture, can be trusted. It's true. His word is true and he is always true to his word. And I can add also that they're not outdated, but just still as relevant today as they always have been. He may be called the Ancient of Days, but he is faithful and he is the same yesterday, today and forever. And his words are alive, they're living and they're active. Matthew 24 verse 35 says, God's words don't ever pass away. They remain always. So I want to encourage you by saying that God can be taken at his word today. He's saying that to each of us this morning, take my word for it, my son, my daughter, I am your father and I'm faithful and true. Which means that the Bible is no ordinary book. What is it that Hebrews 4 tells us? It says the word of God is alive and it's powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow, and it exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. But it can't do that if it's not seen or heard, can it? If you possess a Bible but you don't read it, how can it be of any use? If you keep your Bible closed on your bedside or on a shelf in your house somewhere, it's neither use nor ornament, is it? But when it's picked up and opened and devoured and applied and used as the weapon that God designed it for, then watch out. It's not only for your use on the defensive but an offensive weapon. And you know, the devil trembles and freaks out when a believer has a revelation of how powerful the word of God is. Not the power of knowledge in here, but the power of believing it and knowing it and walking in it and speaking it over your life and into the lives of everyone around you. Three and a half years ago, I went through a really dark season in my life. Um, and I hit a wall due to burnout and exhaustion and my body, uh, it had just had enough. It's like the elastic band had been stretched so, so far that one day it just snapped and the result was utter fear. High anxiety and panic attacks such as I'd never known before in my life. I wasn't aware that my body was capable of reacting um, in such an incredible way to stress and trauma um, and I felt I'd lost control of my mind and my breathing. It was so very frightening and although I'm grateful to my family and closest friends for helping me during this time, it's actually God's word that I relied to um, and I clung to and I discovered it the most effective weapon at my disposal. I completely saturated myself in scriptures that speak of God's peace, his strength, his love, and how he is the answer to all of my fears. Scriptures showing me that I needed to completely trust God and that he is in control of everything. A time when I felt so out of control, this was such a good relief for me. I found security in the scriptures that revealed his complete love for me and discovered there was room for no insecurity, fear, or panic anymore. I wrote them all down, I meditated on them and I spoke them out over myself and I learned of the power of his word through this season in my life. I even wrote a song about it. The word increased my faith and my strength and reduced the fear and anxiety and it started as knowledge, renewing my mind with truth and then it manifests through my actions each time I ran literally to God and his word every time fear and panic started to rise. I now have such a confidence in him that fear doesn't stand a chance. Now, I'm not saying it's wrong to feel fear, it isn't. But I believe that in the fear, God doesn't want me to be halted and that he actually gives me a boldness and a courage while I'm fearful at times. But I now have such a hunger and a thirst for his, uh, a thirst even for his word that I'm actually so thankful for God allowing me to go through that dark time and it's brought me closer to him. 
And I've been a Christian for 24 years and it is really only in the last three and a half years that I've really truly relied and saturated myself in the word. And I thought before all of this that I relied on it, but really I didn't. So my heart's cry for us all this morning is that we would have a hunger and a thirst for God's word like never before, that we would rely on it like our lives depend on it, that my prayer for you and for me is that we will believe God's promises in his word and do our part and watch him do his. You know, even though we have been locked down, restricted and confined through this pandemic season, God's word cannot be bound. There is nothing that can limit the power of his words. The Bible tells us that Jesus is our King, our Deliverer, our Healer, Provider, Strong Tower and our Hope, our Refuge and our Song. And how do we know this? Because his word says so. It's all written in the Bible. Take a look. It's all there. Each word on each page is God-breathed and God-inspired. Every story, declaration, prophecy, promise and warning are all inspired from heaven. And why? to show us the answer to all our questions, to point us to the one who can rescue us from all of our darkness. Everything within its pages points to Jesus. Our God is alive and his kingdom will never end and he cannot be locked down, he cannot be confined. God's word cannot be bound. 2 Timothy 2 verse 9 says that the word of God cannot be chained. It can't be contained. It may be criticised and ridiculed and denied and scoffed at, but it cannot be bound. You know, its contents can bring provision and protection to the believer. It can renew our minds and bring freedom and healing. It can bring conviction, spiritual impartation and produce faith. It can purify our lives. Its blessings are immeasurable. We can partner with its promises. There is no limit as to what God can do. Through its pages, we not only learn so much about ourselves, the world and how it operates, but most importantly, we learn about God and who he is in that he is infinite, he's all powerful, all knowing and all capable. And the most amazing news of all, that he loves you and he is for you. I've suffered a lot with headaches in the past and some time ago now I was given a specific medicine to use whenever I felt a big migraine coming on. Um, The medicine didn't make me feel very good but it was certainly better than the headache. Um, It really helped. It would have been crazy wouldn't it if when the headache started that I left the medicine in the cupboard and you know there's the cure but I, I don't want to take it. I know there's been times when I've been like that when it comes to God's word in that I've been going through a particular situation and instead of opening up my Bible and turning to God, I've left it on my bedside table and tried to work out the problem or the situation in my own head or my own strength. Let's not be like that. Uh, let's open its pages, let's get stuck in, reading it from cover to cover, discovering, you know, its, its truths, learning it, meditating on it, studying it. So much that is um, deep within us, we can recall it and then whenever we need it, it will bring breakthrough in our situations and encouragement and comfort to ourselves, our families and those around us. You know, one of the Holy Spirit's jobs is to remind us, bring to remembrance scripture that we have learned in the past but he can't do that if it's not in there in the first place. In Proverbs 4, verse 20 to 22, it says, My child, pay attention to what I say. Listen carefully to my words. Don't lose sight of them. Let them penetrate deep into your heart, for they bring life to those who find them and healing to their whole body. There's a remedy for every ailment, ailment of life in the scripture everything so when we are in need of answers or a way forward don't just read any part of the bible and wonder why that's not helping read and study scripture that is applicable to what you're going through if you have a headache you wouldn't put a plaster on it likewise if you had a broken leg taking some cough medicine isn't gonna help your leg one bit is it so if you're struggling with fear and panic find out what the bible has to say about fear and panic and study that Uh, memorize scriptures and have them written down uh, to speak out when fear creeps in. It's amazing what this discipline can do to bring breakthrough in your life. His word is true. It's full of power to change situations. It's full of purpose and promise and God is most faithful and he never goes back on his word. You know, if our mind is full of God's word, there is no room for the enemy's lies. So God is saying to you and to me this morning, will you take my word for it? 
Is your mind full of turmoil and darkness and despair this morning? Are you unable to be still and yearning for clarity and calm in your mind? God says, take my word for it. In Philippians 4 verse 6 to 7, it says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has already done. And then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your heart and your mind as you live in Christ Jesus. Are you full of fear and anxiety, worried at the sound of bad news or world conflicts or full of panic over the coronavirus and the potential threat to your health? God says, take my word for it. Psalm 112 verse 7 to 8 says that those who fear the Lord do not fear bad news. They confidently trust in the Lord to care for them. They are confident and fearless and can face their foes triumphantly. Maybe you're lonely this morning. Do you feel isolated and abandoned? The Lord says, take my word for it. Isaiah 41 verse 10 says, don't be afraid for I am with you. Don't be discouraged for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. And again, in Genesis 28 verse 15, it says, I am with you. I will protect you wherever you go. We know that what is in us spills out of us when we are knocked. So what are you full of? Are you full of God's word or are you full of fear and doubt, maybe confusion or anger? I said at the start that sometimes I open my mouth and my mum comes out. The words I used to hear her say to me. How amazing would it be that when we as believers opened our mouths that Jesus' words would come out? His words of life and affirmation, hope, love and power. What a difference that would make to those around us. You know, in our world there are so many battles being fought. Wars between nations, civil wars and wars of words and ideologies between different cultures and social ideals. There are many casualties on all sides, aren't there, of these physical and moral battles, but we're called to fight the good fight and our weapons are not worldly weapons. We fight with a higher power, with an arsenal from heaven, and we have been given the mightiest weapon of all, God's word. If we only knew its power and used it to its full potential, he wants us to take it in our hands and use it to bring down our enemies of fear and hate, injustice, deceit and sickness. He wants us to take hold of it and use it to defend our minds and our hearts and our families and our towns and our country. He wants us to speak declarations from our mouths from his word that will tear down strongholds and bring freedom to those that are bound. You see, the more you get into his word, the more his word gets into you. So what can you do to help make this more of who you are? Well, we need to read it. We need to read it consistently. Make it a regular daily habit. We need to read expectantly. You know, God is always speaking, so let's expect to hear from him as we read his word. We need to read it meditatively. Just spend time thinking over what you've read and praying it through. Uh, give it time to digest into your heart and your mind. Yeah, we need to read it obediently as well. It's our obedience that brings release of God's blessings into our life. You may be watching and have never made a decision to allow God's words to direct your life in any way. Let me invite you now to do just that. If you want to make that decision to follow Jesus, I'd like you to pray this prayer with me right now. Dear Lord Jesus, I know I've not been following you and listening to your ways and I know I've made mistakes and lived my own way. But today I want to turn away from that way of living and I want to dedicate my life to you following you in your ways. Today, I give my life to you and I ask you to forgive me for all the things I've done wrong and to help me follow you. Thank you for giving me new life and a new start and I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you've prayed that prayer, I want to invite you to let someone know from Lakeside Church. You can do that by clicking on the raise hand button if you're watching via church online. Or you can put a thumbs up in the comments section of our Facebook page or YouTube channel. One of our online pastors will acknowledge that um, and will connect with you. Um, it's at the start of a great adventure for your life. And I'm excited for you if that is you. Get hold of a Bible and start taking God's word for it and discovering for yourself the powerful words written inside. 
So church, thank you so much for listening and let's take God's word for it today. Let's be a people who take him at his word, who stand on it, who live it, declare it and walk in it. And let's watch as God is true to his word. Have the most amazing day. God bless you. Well, our time together has come to a close and once again we want to thank you for being with us this morning and please remember that we've got other things taking place through the week so please make sure that you stay connected with us by getting involved where you can all the details get posted up on our social media channels so if you don't already follow us then now is a great time to do that but as we draw this time together to a close right now our prayer for you as always 
is that you will continue to know God's blessing, his grace and his peace over your life. Have the most amazing week. God bless you.